Hola, hi everyone. Um, I'm Gabriela Zapata, and I'm going to present the role of the family of origin uh, in shaping inequality opportunity in Chile. The red one? Sorry. Ah, gracias. Well, this uh, paper investigates uh, this inequality of opportunity measures um, using data from Chile. Uh, it examines uh, the evolution of inequality opportunity in 11-year uh, periods from uh, 2006 and 2017 uh, with different circumstances. One is parental background, um, if uh, family composition, uh, gender, region of birth, ethnicity. Uh, and what is the role of these circumstances is shaping inequality opportunities in Chile. So in particular, to what extent circumstances uh, uh, at birth determined or so are associated with uh, uh, labor market outcomes. So this is grounded in inequality opportunity theory. Chico explained really well uh, all the theory, so I'm not going to spend a lot of my, uh, time doing this. Uh, but uh, I use the ex-ante approach as uh, Vito um, and analyzing uh, secondary data from two waves of, of the survey CASEN. So after Vito's um, presentation, I'm, um, I'm probably I'm going to expand it and I'm going to use all the years because I've already used it in different papers. So, uh, What the ethical justification is bas basically that not all sort of inequalities are the same. Uh, and the, you can sort of split uh, inequality in the one that is unfair or that comes from circumstances that you don't have control over with, uh, and the part that is not, so it depends on your own effort. Uh, so, and, and, and this theory, sort of, or this uh, methodology, basically uh, split these uh, causes and try to identify the circumstance was, uh, one, which is the ex ante approach. So basically, in a world with equal opportunities, uh, the play field is level before the race of life starts um, to compensate for uneven circumstances uh, over which individuals don't have any control. Uh, like I, I always exemplify with this playing field where you have bumps and the one that is already like leveled. Um, and as Vito mentioned, it's a very attractive concept. Um, because it holds individuals responsible for their actions and choices. So what is the country context and the motiva motivation? Well, Chile is a, is a country in South America with a very high inequality, among the highest uh, on, um, uh, of the OECD countries, uh, with a Dini of 0.45 uh, in 2008. Um, we have a very high concentration of income at the very top, uh, with the 10 percent concentrating uh, 72 or almost 73 percent of total income uh, well, while the average in Latin America is 54 um, the top one percent concentrates almost 30 percent of total income um, also we have a, a very high inter intergenerational persistence um, in uh, education income um, so with income elasticities of 0.6, um, correlation coefficients in education of 0.4, um, and this absolute mobility uh, is combined with very uh, relative persistence at the top of the income distribution. So we also have higher, high returns to higher education that have been dropping over the years. Um, um, also, with a great dispersion depending on the quality or prestige uh, of the uh, higher education uh, institution you attended. And the background of the family. So, basically, what I said before, we decompose uh, inequality in inequality opportunities, and the rest is effort, inequality plus lack plus everything that we don't measure. Uh, as effort is a private information, so we uh, attempt to measure differences in outcome um, due to different circumstances, holding effort constant. Um, and the means uh, among these circumstances is the measure of inequality opportunity. 
So in practice, what we do is we apply the an inequality index to a counterfactual income distribution where we limit, eliminate all the um, inequality that it doesn't come from circumstances. So um, Tico also used this uh, kind of like something like this uh, figure where if our sample is divided, for example, in four circumstances, so this is parental education. So we have people with parents with no formal education, parents with completed primary education, secondary and higher education. So basically, the, the way that we construct our um, counterfactual distribution is by aver averaging income uh, of every uh, type that is called in this literature. And then we compare, so with this, uh, counterfactual distribution, we apply an inequality index, and that's the measure of inequality opportunity in the uh, ex-ante approach. So I'm not going to explain the, the parametric method because Chico and Vito also mentioned them. Uh, but basically, what you, what you do is the same, but parametrically. Um, and then you can have the level of inequality opportunity, which will be the inequality index applied to this counterfactual distribution, or you can express it as a share of total inequality. So comparing the inequality in this counterfactual distribution with the total inequality of the sample. And then the next question is what? Well, which inequality index? Uh, in the beginning, this literature used the mean logarithmic deviation because of the decomposability um, uh, property. So basically, because you are sort of splitting total inequality in these two components, uh, efforts and uh, circumstances, then the natural uh, inequality index is one that is decomposable. So uh, it was used in logarithmic deviation. However, the MLD is more sensitive to the lower tail distribution. And because the way we are constructing our counterfactual uh, distribution is by average, so we are sort of eliminating the tails. Uh, so the latest, well, Vito was a part of the paper, said we should use a Gini index. But the problem with the Gini index uh, is that it's not decomposable. So uh, the Gini index cannot be decomposed in these two, uh, these two parts. So to solve this problem in this paper, I use um, uh, the Shapley decomposition, uh, which allows the estimation um, of the marginal contribution of the within and the between groups. Because basically this is what we are, are doing here. So the inequality of, um, of circumstances is the inequality between groups. And basically the one that we are removing, the inequality of efforts, is the within groups inequality. So the way to do it is basically by averaging this. Um, if we apply the Gini index first of a counterfactual distribution done by this average by types, we get a different result. We, we, have, we are assuming that the rest is inequality of efforts or effort plus lack plus everything else. Uh, but if we do the same, but the other way around, so if we calculate our counterfactual distribution uh, putting the same average income by, uh, by, by types, then we will get a different a Gini. So this method sort of average these two things um, and get, a, we will see, a kind of like low in between um, estimate. So it's higher than the MLD that it was criticized in the, in the beginning that the MLD gives lower estimates because it's uh, focused on the, or, or is more sensitive to the um, lower tail of the distribution, uh, but the Gini is better because um, it focuses on the middle of the distribution, um, but here we have uh, something in between. So the data comes from, the, as I said, two waves of the CASEN uh, survey. Uh, we use a sample that is uh, household heads um, at working age, men and women 25 and between 25 and 60, who are active in the labor market. Uh, I have two outcome variables, um, individual market income, and individual hourly incomes. The idea is to uh, try to correct for 
the women's selection. Women were not included in the first papers because it said that they sort of work less hours and that is an endogenous decision. So I use hourly income to uh, solve for that problem. Uh, and the circumstances is parental education, gender, region of birth, uh, ethnicity, and family composition. By family composition is if the person lived with both parents until the age uh, of a uh, 15. So this is the sample. Um, we have uh, more women uh, on the second year. Um, parental education uh, increase in primary and se sorry in secondary and higher education in the second year. I um, I have a problem that I have to solve because it's it doesn't make much sense that the uh, people w without any education or with uh, primary and complete increase in 2017 and that has to do with the way that the question was asked in 2006. So maybe I will have to use 2009 uh, as the first year to compare to be comparable. Um, then the place of birth is divided in, in four regions, if you know Chile is very long. So basically climates and industries and um, are very different between the regions. So it's the north, the center, uh, the south and the capital, which is a metropolitan city. Um, and this is the percentage of people uh, growing with parents. Um, so it decreased a little bit between the, these two years and people with indigenous background. So what I have here, the first, uh, this, this descriptive slide, so you can see um, in, a, in a world with equal opportunities, I, I think it's easier to see it. Uh, I don't have the other graph. So this, this is average, average earnings in Chilean pesos uh, for different uh, subsamples. So this is 2006 and 2017. Oh, 2006 and 2017. So if the income, the average income doesn't depend on your circumstances, you wouldn't have a, a reason to see this uh, slope. So you will be flat. Uh, average should be equal. Or they wouldn't have a reason to don't be uh, different. But what you see here is actually a very uh, um, a correlation, a very high correlation between your income and the level of the education of your parent. So people with parents we don't know education are in this blue color, and you see the difference with uh, on average income of parent, uh, people that have parents that attended higher education. So you see the same in both years. Um, you see higher average in the second year. Um, you see average, higher average for men than women, but it's a very clear it's very clear that uh, your income depends, or at least is highly correlated with the education of your parents. And uh, here are the measures. These are the measures of inequality opportunity. I defined four scenarios, so basically to compare with other countries. Um, a scenario B, A is considered as a circumstance only parental education, uh, and that's the estimates of inequality. Uh, this is the Gini of the, of the um, actual distribution. Uh, this is the Gini applied uh, to the um, contrafactual distribution, but in the way that I showed in, in the previous uh, slide. And this would be the within, and in this case, uh, we can add both, and they will sum uh, exactly the Gini. And then we get uh, almost 30% in 2010. Uh, six, uh, a little bit less uh, in 2017. So it's not a big difference between the two years. And uh, when we add a, a circumstance, so in scenario B, what I have is I include gender, so it's region, uh, parental education plus gender. Um, and then uh, scenario C, I add region of birth. And in scenario D, I add family composition and ethnicity. So um, this is, of course, normal that inequality opportunity increase, uh, where estimates increase when we add new circumstances. Um, and, and what we see between years is a small decline, but very, very small. 
So in 11 years, uh, inequality opportunity has almost not changed in the country. So this is for market income. Uh, this is for hourly incomes. So uh, basically, uh, with hourly incomes, we get uh, smaller uh, estimates, which is a kind of a, uh, what is expected, because um, the uh, using hourly incomes, the differences between, for example, genders are smaller, uh, and, and also uh, because it's, um, because it's a household's head, uh, and you women usually are in charge of the uh, caregivers' responsibilities in the house, so it's more likely that a man have more than one uh, job than a woman, and things like that. So, so this is the Shapley decomposition, the same that Vito showed, but in a different way, uh, presented in a different way, where um, I can see. Oh, sorry, we can see. Uh, that the most relevant circumstance is parental uh, education. Uh, for in the case of market income, the second uh, and, and increase the relevance so is uh, gender. So uh, and also for the uh, sorry, it both says market income, but this one is uh, hourly income. Is the other way around? No, it's, this is hourly income. This is a mistake in the slide. So uh, gender is. Uh, more relevant on the second year in 2017. Region of birth, um, in this case, is the third uh, circumstance relevant, but, uh, but it decreased in relevance between those years. And we, we see a small contribution of indigenous background and um, smaller even for growing with the parents. So this changed a bit when with these two uh, income sources but follows sort of like the same pattern. What is, is expected also that, that gender is re less relevant in our income, so because um, in our income we're correcting for this different hours that women can, can work. So, and, and this is the comparison between the estimates using the MLD. So this is the inequality opportunity that we would have got using the mean logarithmic deviation. This is the inequality uh, opportunity that we would have got when we use the Gini applied directly to the uh, counterfactual distribution and then as a uh, percentage of total inequality. And these are, are my estimates. So they follow the same trend as the MLD, uh, but and they are slightly higher. So the... Um, the argument would be that applying, thank you, applying the um, the Gini index directly to the distribution, to the counterfactual distribution, could uh, overestimate, could overestimate the uh, inequality opportunity. So, um, something that I just did in uh, not not very long ago. So it's it's a new thing. So if I have comments. Uh, uh, how to interpret this, it could help me too, is a uh, reef decomposition. So this, basically this decomposition is an uh, uh, adaptation of the Osaka Blinder decomposition, which allows you to measure, um, to, to identify these two compo composition and uh, earning structure effects in different part of the, um, for different uh, d distributional measures, not just the mean as the Oxa Osaka blinder. So in this case, I use the quantiles. So the dif and this is is measuring the difference between two years, so between 2006 and 2017, and how the different circumstances affect um, this this to the, the variation between in, 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 in income between these years. So we have the different percentiles here. Uh, we have the composition effect, uh, measure the changes due to the varying uh, w uh, the circumstances, how this, for example, there are more women in, the, in, the, in 2017 um, in the sample, uh, people have more higher parents have higher education and secondary education more than in the previous sample, etc. So it's basically the composition of the circumstances. 
And this, in the earning structure effect, uh, we have the changes in the returns of these circumstances. So what is uh, dominating here is the earning structure effect. Uh, and it has a positive effect of earnings. So increase earnings and increase earnings, particularly on the top of the distribution. Just the, to finish, this is my last uh, slide. So the, the sad part <laughs> is that uh, circumstances, which, which I kind of expected because this model is not used in this type of literature uh, yet. So it's, um, it, it uses characteristics, are, are for example, well, gender is one of the characteristics, but also uh, years of education, of your own education. Here I'm using parental education. So there is more like an indirect effect even. Um, in the changes in, in, in income, uh, in earnings between these two years. So there is a lot that is not explained by the circumstances. Well, this also happened when, when you use this in, a, in labor market um, settings, so with other type of characteristics. But what we can see here is um, inequality decreasing kind of effect of parental education. Uh, gender is, uh, has a positive effect in, in increasing income, particularly in the beginning and as a uh, lower part of the distribution, and the opposite is for, for region of birth. Uh, so that's it. Thank you.